Hi, this is Malcolm Groves from Code Partners. In today's session, I want to talk about enterprise connectors, but in particular, connecting to the application. Um, if you're not aware of what enterprise connectors is, then super quickly, uh, they're effectively FireDAC drivers that let you connect to backend applications. So rather than connecting to a relational database, you're connecting to some application, whether it's uh, Salesforce or MYOB or Xero or Google Drive or Gmail or something like that. Uh, and the driver takes care of representing that application's data as if it were a relational database so that you can still throw SQL against it, use your query components, your um, stored procedure components, your table components against that data. Um, but it takes care of translating that into API calls, yeah? Now, if you've ever watched a enterprise connected demo, most of the ones that I've seen um, don't go into a lot of detail about the connection, <clears throat> excuse me. So for example, they'll, they'll use the data explorer and, ha and set up a, a connection here with the bare minimum of information and then let you see we've got, you know, columns uh, in my uh, spreadsheet. Uh, in this case, I'm using the Google Sheets um, Enterprise Connector, um, but we'll, we'll talk about what to do with other ones. But you can see here, I'm connecting to this Customers Sheet 1, and I've got first name, last name, age, and city. And that corresponds to, <clears throat> here's my spreadsheet, first name, last name, age, and city. It's my Customers Spreadsheet, and we're talking to Sheet 1, the first sheet within that spreadsheet. Yeah? So that's that's kind of fine for a demo or for playing around or whatever. You know, we can say view, and you can see here we're doing select star from uh, customers underscore sheet one, and we've got that same data, which is in my Google sheet. Yeah, that's fine. But that doesn't give you a lot of information about how you would do this actually in your application, yeah? Um, which is what I want to focus on. So uh, I'm going to connect to the same data, uh, Google Sheets, um, but I'm going to do it in just a simple VCL application. It's got a grid, a data source, an FD query. The FD query has basically that same SQL in it. Yeah, select star from the table. But the connection that I'm using is completely empty. Yeah, it's actually it's not even set up to point to the Google Sheets driver yet. Yeah, so I want to totally start from scratch. So how do I do this? Well, the short answer, and you know the obvious answer, is to read the documentation. Um, when you install your components, it will install all of this help information and um, for regardless of the driver, um, the help information tends to be um, formatted in much the same way. So there's usually a getting started section which talks about how do I establish a connection. Um, uh, in this case, how we're authenticating. It, 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 in this case, it's showing that we're using OAuth to authenticate gives you a bit of information on what to do if you're in a desktop application or if you're in a headless environment where you don't want the, a user interface to be displayed. Uh, and then it's also got some information about the data model, how it's exposing that information to you. Yeah. So in this case, the fact that it's treating sheets in a spreadsheet as if they were tables and, and the columns, uh, what stored procedures it gives you to access, all of that kind of stuff. So the short kind of obvious answer is we'll read the documentation. Yeah. But this will be a really short session if that's all I'm going to tell you. So instead what I want to do is go in and put, fill out not the bare minimum information I need to connect, but what I think is the bare minimum that you should be doing for an application that you would actually deploy to someone. Yeah. Um, so if I come into my FireDAC connection editor, uh, I need to tell it what driver I'm using. So I'm going to use the Google Sheets driver. Um, and if I scroll down, the bare minimum information that you would need to even connect are two things. Yeah, um, I need to tell the connection whether I want it to initiate the OAuth um, authentication process. Yeah, it's off by default. So this, when this application runs and tries to connect, it will look for an access token. Yeah, if it can't find one, if this is set to off, it'll just fail, the connection will fail, yeah? Um, instead, I want it to say, well, if you don't find a token, I'm gonna to set it to get and refresh, which basically says, if you don't find a token, get one, start the process. So that's the first bare minimum bit of information that you need to even connect, yeah? The second, because this is Google Sheets, I need to tell it where to find 
the sheets I want to access. Yeah. Um, so if I come down here, there's, see there's folder name and folder ID. You only need to specify one of these. But my um, spreadsheet here is in a folder. The path, if you like, to that folder on Google Drive is just demo. Demo is a folder hanging off the root of my Google Drive. Um, and within it, it's, I've only got the one spreadsheet. But, you know, I could have multiple and each of those would be exposed as if they were tables in my, in my database, yeah? So I want to tell it that it's in the demo folder, yeah? So in my case, I'll just say um, demo, okay? That's the bare minimum of information that you need to connect. But if I do this, if I say okay, and then if I try and enable my query, um, it's talking off to Google Drive. And if I move these guys out of the way so you can actually see what's going on, you can see I'm getting data, yeah? The same data in my spreadsheet. So you might think that's a victory, yeah, but it's kind of not in my view. Um, first off, this, this is kind of weird because I connected and I wasn't prompted to authenticate. Yeah, I just told it to um, kick off the OAuth authentication process, uh, but it didn't actually get me to authenticate. Yeah, the reason for that is that because I've already made a connection in Data Explorer here and connected. That, when I did that, it kicked off the, the OAuth authentication process, yeah? And it got back uh, an access token and saved it locally, yeah? In the default kind of location, yeah? When I set up this FD connection, I also used the default location. So in this case, my application is using the same OAuth or ten, or, uh, uh, token that my data explorer in the IDE is using, yeah? That's probably not what I want in my application, yeah? Uh, I probably don't want to use that default location. I probably want to use a location to store that token which is unique to my application or my, my set of applications, yeah? So to change that, if we come back into our FD connection and come down, if we scroll down a bit, we'll see under where we said uh, initiate OAuth, here, OAuth settings location. This folder is where it's going to store the token that it gets back. And you can see by default, it's this C data, uh, Google Sheets data provider, OAuth settings.txt file. Yeah. And so if we actually have a look at that, when my application tried to connect, it went looking in that location and found this file. Yeah. Now, the, the token's um, encrypted, so you know there's a level of protection with that, but still, I probably don't want to share the same token and by extension the same credentials with other applications on my system or the customer's system that might be also using the CData driver. Yeah, I probably want my own. So that's the first thing that I would suggest you do is actually change that location to a directory that you control, um, which is specific to your um, applications. Yeah, so do that. Um, I'll just delete this one so that... Um, when we then go to connect again in a second, it takes me through that process again, yeah? The other thing that I want to do is if, I'll, I'll take you through it in a second. Uh, in fact, let me do it now. Um, if I try and connect again, it'll go looking for that uh, token in that location. I just deleted it. So it'll force, because I set to the, the initiate OAuth thing to get and refresh, it's kicking me into the browser to actually authenticate. Yeah, great, that's progress. However, look at this. It's asking, imagine you, you are your customer. They've just bought and installed your application called, whatever your application's called, Super Mega App 2000 or something. Yeah, they come in here, they authenticate, and they're being asked to choose an account to continue to this thing called C Data Sheets Connector. That's weird. So if I select this and go in here, it's asking me, well, this application called C Data Sheets Connector needs access to Google Drive and it needs access to your spreadsheets in Google Drive. Do you trust C Data Sheets Connector? Your customer probably won't know what C Data Sheets Connector is. They're expecting to see Super Mega App 2000 there. So there's a good chance they'll cancel out of this and say no. Yeah. Um, 
I'll say allow just so we can see that, okay, we've connected again, bang, we've got this OAuth settings uh, file back here, so let me disconnect one more time, and I'll delete that again just to force it to, uh, to get it again, yeah? So instead, I want to get it to use my uh, screens, yeah? I want my customer to see my application details so that they know that they can trust it. Well, there's a higher level of trust, yeah? So, because we're using Google Sheets, we need to go into the Google API dashboard. Um, it's console.developers.google.com. Notice I've created a project called Demos, yeah? So you'll probably want to create a project for your application or your suite of applications, yeah? You can just create a new project, yeah? But I've created one called Demos, yeah? The second thing I need to do is tell it what APIs it needs access to. Uh, I've done it already here. It says I need the Google Drive API and the Google Sheets API. But you can do that just by coming into library, searching for those, and then enabling them. So if you come in here and type Drive, you can see that one of the options we get is the Google Drive API. And if we select that, we'll be able to then enable the API. Uh, I've already enabled this, but if we click on it and go in and have a look, um, it'll give you some information about what the API is and then it'll give you a button here that says enable. Uh, because I've already enabled it, it says manage, but you'll see one that says enable. So you just come in, you tick that, do the same thing for the Google Sheets API, yeah? Um, and then come back to your dashboard, okay? So first thing, enable the APIs that you need. The next thing that you need to do is we wanna have control of that um, consent screen that pops up. So it doesn't say C data Sheets Connector, we want it to say Super Mega App 2000 or whatever your application's called, yeah? So come in here, define a new one. It'll be empty. I've got one defined saying, that I've said it's in for internal users, so only people in Code Partners could access it, but you could make it public so that other people could. Give it a name, Code Rage Demo. You could give it a logo if you wanted. I've put in an email address for people to get support. There's a bunch of other things you can set, but that's kind of the bare minimum you need. Um, and then click Save, yeah? So we've enabled our APIs, we've created a consent screen. The last thing we need to do is set up some credentials yeah, that our application is going to use to connect to this API. Yeah. So you'd click create credentials. I've already done some here. I've just created one called Windows Desktop App. And you'll see here that it's got a client ID and a client secret. Yeah. Now don't worry, I'm gonna delete this as soon as I create this video. So it'll be gone by the time any of you guys uh, actually see it. Um, but these are the bits of information we want to be able to put into our FIDAC connection. So if I copy my client ID, come back to my FIDAC connection, and scroll down back to that OAuth section that we were at before, there's my client ID. So I'll paste in there. And then the other part that I want is my client secret. Yeah. So if I come back here, client secret, paste that in there. Now, in, in my view, there's a few other things you could do, but in my view, we've now got the bare minimum of settings that I would put in, a, in an application, yeah? We've told it to initiate OAuth. Uh, we've set our settings location for the type where it's gonna store the token so that it's somewhere that, that our application is looking, not all uh, CData or Google Sheets applications are looking. Um, I've put in my client ID and my client secret, so it's going to use my application rather than the um, the generic, the default one that comes with CData, or that's defined for CData. Uh, and I've come down and specified the folder name. Okay, so now this is what your user would see if they tried to run your application first time when it connected. It wouldn't find the token that it needed in that custom location that you've specified. It would throw them out to the browser so that they could sign in using their Google account. Um, and notice it's now referring to my, using my credential screen. So it's referring to the Code Rage demo or the Super Mega App 2000 rather than uh, whatever it was before, C Data Sheets Connector. Comes in here, it's asking, do you trust application name that your customer actually recognizes? Awesome. So we say, okay. And then successful token is stored in that location that we specified 
in our driver and we've got access to the data. Okay, so in my view, that's kind of the bare minimum you'd want to do for a connection that you were going to put in front of a customer. Yeah, there's more. You should read, of course, read the documentation that I was talking about. Um, but at a minimum, hopefully that gets you going. And now you can then start playing, throwing SQL, firing stored procedures, whatever you want to do against Google Sheets in this instance. Okay, hopefully that was useful. I uh, hope you can start playing with uh, the enterprise connectors. They're included in enterprise and architect level SKUs already. So if you've got enterprise or architect, you've already got them. So uh, it's worth, I think, having a play that's way, way more productive than uh, trying to use the REST APIs to talk to these applications. Okay, cheers. Hope you enjoy the rest of Code Rate.